More often than not, a weapon's mastery lockout is not necessarily representative of its power. The comb is one such weapon. Hey guys, hello and welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this mastery rank 5 shotgun, the comb. I'm gonna be covering a cheap build, something affordable that anybody can get into, but of course we also have the classic end game setup with a Riven. That being said though, please keep in mind that I will be covering a lot of the basics. So if you're a veteran of the game and already know most of this stuff, then please, bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the comb shotgun. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped and I'm gonna be taking roughly 30 meters away from the wall and start shooting. You will see that the comb has a spool up effect, it needs a couple of shots to get its full fire rate and you're also gonna be getting additional pellets per shot. If we let the comb ramp down, there we go, now you will see that the first shot only does a single pellet, second shot more, third shot more and so on and so forth. Now let's take a closer look over here again. First shot a single pellet, then a couple of more, then more and so on and so forth. And you will also see that at full fire rate the comb will consume 4 shells per shot so it's not very ammo efficient. Total, you're gonna get 66 shots out of a full clip, which is how many again? 245. Let's jump into stats and see precisely what we're dealing with. First of all, mod capacity is 60 out of 60. And if your comb only has 30 out of 30, then jump into actions and install an Orokin Catalyst, which will double your mod capacity and it is essential to any weapon build. Of course, if you want to get the most out of it. You can obtain this one from alerts and invasions, especially after death streams, and it's also a possible reward from the daily sortie. If you don't have access to the sortie yet, simply progress further through the story and you will. Alternatively, you can pay 20 plat to have one installed. Next, the number 5, right next to the weapon's name. That means that my weapon has been formatted a total of 5 times. This was done for the purpose of testing. For the weapon builds, I'm recommending you guys 2 maximum of 3 should be more than enough. Now once again, the way you format, you jump into action, you hit polarization and you will be able to cycle through the available uh, symbols. You have 3 basic symbols, V or Madurai, P or Vazarin and Dash or Naramon. Adding a polarization to a slot will mean that we're gonna be able to get the drain of mods down by 50% rounded up. So for example, if I slap on prime point blank in a non-polarized slot, it will drain the stated amount of 12. However, if I put it over a matching polarization, Madurai, it's gonna go down to 6. Alternatively, if you put it over a non-matching slot, like uh, this Naramon here, it will go up to 15. And this is why players add format to basically everything in the game. So we can get the drain cost down, so we can add more powerful mods. And don't worry, I'm not gonna tell you to put prime this or prime that. At least not for the time being. Accuracy on the comb is 3.6, but this is representative of the full spool up effect. The initial shots of the cone, right up until shot number 5, are actually pretty accurate. Critical chance, unfortunately only 11%, which means that mods that increase critical chance by a percentage will not have a huge effect on the comb, which is a pity because the crit multiplier is actually very good at 2.3. Fall off is between 15 and 25 meters, they don't tell you that, but yes, you will be needing to be very close to your target in order to get the most amount of damage out of the comb, especially at full spool up because of the accuracy. Fire rate is 3.67, but again, this is at full spool up. Magazine is 245, but effectively 66 shots. Punch through 1.5. Now, this is amazing. The comb has default punch through. Punch through means that your projectiles, your pellets will be going through your initial target and keep going for 1.5 meters. So you're going to be able to hit multiple enemies with a single shot. Reload 2.0, but considering the high amount of magazine size, even at 66 effective, it's still pretty good and we're not gonna mess around with the re reload. Riven Disposition. Now I know this can be a bit confusing. You see these five little dots, that means that the Riven Dispo is 5 out of 5. The more popular a weapon is, the lower this Riven Disposition will be. The less popular a weapon is, the higher it will be. A high disposition means that the Riven mods will be extremely powerful. So once again, at full 5 out of 5, you'll see stuff like this. Look at that. Crazy amounts on Rivens. And of course, vice versa applies. Low Dispo will mean low stats on Rivens. Status chance is 25% and this is kinda where the comb shines, but more on that a bit later. Next, the default damage on the comb and you will find that many players refer to this as IPS or Impact, Puncture and Slash. 
Now you'll see that the slash amount is the highest which is definitely good, just keep in mind that the damage numbers you see here are representative of a single pellet and at full spool up we're gonna be firing 12 pellets per shot and consuming 4 ammo per shot. Now let's start slapping on some mods and we're gonna start with the mandatory mods for the comb. Damage! Point blank is mandatory and if you have prime versions of any of the mods that I recommend then by all means go right on ahead and use your prime versions. For the sake of presentation, for the initial build we're gonna keep it new player friendly. Now 90% extra damage is nice but we're also gonna be adding blaze. This is a fantastic shotgun mod. 60% damage and 60% heat. The heat is an elemental and you will see it did show up here between the IPS. We got 45 heat. More on that a bit later. Next, the best thing on mostly any weapon. It's called multi-shot and we're gonna be adding Hell's Chamber with 120% multi-shot as well as Vigilante Armaments. If you don't have Vigilante Armaments, this one is obtained from Bounties Down on Cetus and don't let anybody trick you, it's not worth more than 5 plat, so keep that one in mind. 60% multi-shot and 120% multi-shot from Hell's Chamber. What does multi-shot do anyway? It simply fires multiple projectiles with a single shot, so normally if I have a weapon that fires one projectile with a shot and I add a 100% multi-shot, it will fire two projectiles with a single shot. 120% multi-shot will mean that I have a 20% chance of firing a third projectile. So in total I added 180% multi-shot. The set bonus from Vigilante Armaments is a nice bonus but again the comb is not particularly a crit weapon. At least not now that is. We got our multi-shot, next we should be looking towards elemental damage. Let's start off with something like electricity, why not? Now elemental damage will always be combined 2 by 2 on your weapon. As you can see now I only have one elemental in the form of heat. If I was to add charged shell, they will combine together and make radiation damage, which is very good against alloy armor for example. Keep in mind that the elemental combinations are always 2 by 2 and the priority is from top left to bottom right. When adding elemental damage to a weapon one must always keep in mind where are you going and who are you fighting because all the factions in Warframe have different resistances and vulnerabilities to different types of damage including the physical types or IPS and the elemental types like radiation. Let's take a couple of general examples. The round heads of the Grenier faction are heavily armor targets and you will find two armor types on them. Ferrite which is usually reserved for their more heavier units such as heavy gunner that one is weak to corrosive damage which is the elemental combo between electricity and toxin. But you will also find alloy armor. Alloy armor is weak to radiation damage. The box heads of the corpus faction, those are the guys with the big shields. Now they're mostly not a threat most of the time but if you build magnetic against them you will deal extra damage to their shields. Alternatively you can build gas which will uh, bypass their uh, shields entirely and deal damage to their health on a proc because it procs toxin. And even a better idea would just to build toxin altogether and bypass all those shields. And the last faction that we're gonna mention is the uh, creatures of the infested faction. Now these guys are fairly weak but there's a lot of them so I would recommend AoE weapons heavily modded into heat. The infested are a bit tricky because they have four health types and all of those four health types have different resistances and vulnerabilities and you can check out that info on the wiki so I don't need to talk for the next hour. In any case back to adding elemental damage to our weapon. I added charge shell out. that's 90% electricity. When adding elemental damage to a weapon you always have the option of the 90 mods which give more damage or the 60-60 mods which give less damage but a good chunk of status chance. In order for you to understand which mods you should be going for, first you need to understand how status chance works in Warframe, especially for pellet based weapons. Essentially your status chance gets divided among how many projectiles you fire with a single shot or how many pellets you fire with a single shot, unless you get a 100% status chance before multi-shot effects. If you take a look over here, my status chance did go up to 55.3, but that is because of multi-shot. I'm firing even more pellets at my targets. The number of which the status chance will be getting divided by is even higher because of the multi-shot. That is why I want a 100% status chance before multi-shot. So each and every pellet will be applying status. Confusing? Yes, a little bit, but hopefully it will get cleared up. Let's go to true status chance effects. Those are percentage based increases, such as the 60 60 mods. Frigid Blast is the cold version, scattering for heat, uh, toxic barrage for toxin, and shell shock 
for electricity incidentally this one is the most expensive one now make no mistake i'm not recommending these things to a new player definitely not this is just to showcase how status chance works Let's take a look over here, up to 85% because of all the percentage base increases. Still not 100%, still no cigar, still my status chance will get divided amongst how many pellets I am firing. In essence, that is simply how it works. You can get this weapon to a true 100% status chance before multi-shot effects with one or two ways mostly. First, Nano Applicator. Nano Applicator currently on PC is going for about 120, 130 plat, and I do not recommend it, especially not to new players. On Ability Cast, 90% status chance while aiming for 9 seconds, which is why you don't see the bonus over here because it's not active. First, you need to combine it with some more frame synergies, an ability that you can spam constantly so you can keep this buff up and also aim. To be honest, it's so not worth it. Wasting 5 mod slots, okay, 4 60 60 mods plus nano applicator just to get that magic 100% status chance. But if you do get it, then all of your pellets will be applying status to the target. The other way is through a ribbon, and more on that a bit later. In any case, this is not worth it, especially if you're just starting out. If you're more of a veteran, that you already know the worth of uh, nano applicator. Back to multi-shot with Vigilante Armaments and Hell's Chamber. Now let's add that elemental damage. Charge Shell, the Electricity, 90 mod. Next we're gonna go for Toxin with Pathogen Rounds, which is 90% Toxin. Suddenly I have an elemental combo on the weapon. Corrosive 378. Corrosive is exceptionally good versus Ferrite Armor of the Grenier faction or for example Fossilized Armor of the Infested faction. But just between you and me, don't worry about the Infested too much. In any case, let's take a look at all these statuses on my weapon now. I have Impact, Heat, Puncture, Slash and Corrosive and you might be tempted to say that the highest status chance is for Corrosive because it's 378. Not so. Impact, Puncture and Slash, the default damage or the physical types in Warframe have a 4 times greater chance of proccing over elemental types. So when you're looking at this Slash, 126, if you're trying to take into account the status chance then simply multiply it by 4 and you're gonna get 500 something. In fact, higher than the corrosive. In any case, we slap down a uh, contagious spread and charge shell not for the status chance but for the type of damage it does. Next, we're gonna look into some fire rate. As you saw, the comb has a spool up to it, which is kinda slow. Increasing that fire rate will be definitely a good idea. What shotgun spaz? Once again, a fairly common mod, everybody should have it. 90% fire rate and that spool up should no longer bother you. We still have one mod slot. This is an option slot. You can slap into this one pretty much whatever you are comfortable with. Let's try another elemental. Chilling Grass, 90% cold, and all of a sudden I am making my second elemental combo. It is Blast, the combination between Heat from Blaze and Cold. Blast is not an exceptional elemental combo currently in Warframe. For example, against Ferrite, it deals 25% less damage. This is the build I'm gonna be recommending to you guys. You can make a couple of changes. For example, maybe you don't like Blast. Just between you and me, I don't like it that much either. You can remove it and just add more heat, which will get combined with Blaze's value. You can go for Incendiary Code. This one fully maxed out will simply give you 90% heat, just like Contagious Spread or Charge Shell. Or you can go for Scattering Inferno. In this build, I don't recommend it. Once again, that status chance isn't really gonna help me much as long as it gets divided. If you can't reach 100% without multi-shot, then simply don't go for it. That is my recommendation to you guys. That being said though, let's bring it back to how the comb works. Do you remember that initially we're not really firing all that many pellets? The first couple of shots of the comb don't fire a thousand pellets, just two, three, depending again on how much multi-shot you put on the weapon. So those first initial shots have a good uh, per pellet chance of applying status. Damn, that was long. I'm so sorry. Let's test it. Okay, that's the initial build. That's what I recommend to new players. And I got assortment here for you guys. We got Ancient Healer Eximus representing the Infested, Elite Crewman Eximus for the Corpus Faction, and Corrupted Heavy Gunner for the ever so tough Grenier. Simulate and let's go to town. Let's see what. Oh, wait. I gotta switch my Warframe out because the passive of Vault kinda skews the result just a little bit. Do you guys like shapeliness? I love shapeliness. So we're gonna go for Mirage. To the left we will find the representatives of the Corpus faction, now these guys are elite crewman Schmeximus and of course they will pose no threat to you and your comb. Everything is level 60 because I thought this would be MR appropriate but we will pump it up a bit later. 
These guys are the ancient healers, Eximus of the infested faction and as you can see no threat at all, not even the corrupted heavy gunner which have heavy uh, ferrite armor are a threat because we built corrosive which deals more damage against them. Then again the blast uh, does deal 25% less damage. As you can see the comb is absolutely tearing through targets like there's no tomorrow and this is still an MR5 weapon. If you're MR5, 7, 8, I doubt you will see higher levels than that, but we will test with a different build next. It's a way to build a comb and as long as you're starting out and you're new, definitely go for something like this, it will be more than worth it. Here is a crit comb, now I choose to showcase this build because it's not very common, you can build a comb for crit, though it's a bit more convoluted. First of all, we got Contagious Spread together with uh, Chilling Grass. These two together will make Viral Damage. Viral Damage is an exceptional elemental combo simply because it will yield great results in almost any circumstance. Of course, we kept Health Chamber for the multi-shot together with Point Blank for the damage. We slapped in Ravage for the crit damage and Shotgun Spaz remains on the weapon for the 90% fire rate. Now for the two headlights. Laser Sight together with Hunter Munitions. Hunter Munitions has a 30% chance to apply slash status to an enemy on critical hit, but our crit chance is only 11%. I also slapped on Laser Sight, 120% crit chance while aiming for 9 seconds, and this is an on headshot effect. You might not have this one from the trade chat, roughly 15 plat. This was an event mod, if I remember correctly. Now, I use Laser Sight over Blunderbuss simply because Blunderbuss only offers 90% crit chance, so in essence, it gives me what? 9-10% crit chance, laser sight gives me 13 point something. This however is not the heart of the build, this without a very specific arcane would simply not work and that arcane is called Arcane Avenger, R3. On damage 14% chance for 30% critical chance for 8 seconds and the usual 1 arcane revive. And you might think okay fine 30% crit chance is not that big of a deal. But it is, because this is an additive bonus. It will not give plus 30% to my existing base chance of 11. It simply gives me 30, period. So as long as this proc is up, I'm going to be having 41% crit chance. And then I'm going to be getting another 13 from laser sight on headshot. This is how you can get the comb to have a solid crit chance. And this is how I'm going to be getting my slash amounts. Because uh, the weapon does have a high amount of slash, definitely, but my status chance is not really all that high and it gets divided, so I'm not really gonna be getting slashes from the status chance, I will be getting them from Hunter Munitions. And let's test it out and see how it works. But for that, we're gonna be spawning more beefier targets, like Corrupted Heavy Gunner. Where are you guys? Corrupted Heavy Gunner, and we're gonna be spawning 8 of them, that should prove sufficient, and we're gonna bump up the level to 120. And I'm also going to be on pausing the AI simply because I want them to hit me so I can get procs of Arcane Avenger. Come at me boys, Arcane Avenger procs and I'm going to go for straight headshots. And as you will see, I'm going to be getting plenty of crits on my targets. Look at all those bleed effects and I'm also getting viral. Keep in mind that while the comb is not spool up, the first couple of shots do have a very good uh, chance of applying status. And you can go for a build such as this. It's a bit convoluted, yes it's true and it does require Arcane Avenger which currently on PC R3 is going for about 200 plat. Now that's a lot of plat to ask, it's not very new player friendly but if you want to get into Eidolon Huts, Arcane Avenger is an outstanding mod simply because it's an additive after bonus. So right now I'm rocking a total crit chance about what, 50-60% something along those lines and I'm getting crits on the target, I'm getting slashes, viral everything I need for the comb. That one ran away from me, but what about you? Plenty of crits, plenty of slashes, absolutely bloody glorious. And of course, you can further augment uh, this build as you desire. You can go for even more crit damage, for example. Crit damage options, let's have a look outside of Prime Ravage, of course. How about Shrapnel Shot? This one can be obtained from Lua Spy Missions. I think it was Rotation B or C or even A. In any case, link in the cards now for an easy mode way to farm Lua Spy Missions. And this one will give you 99% crit damage while aiming for 9 seconds, which is a whole lot more than Ravage. Though keep in mind it's a non-kill effect. And now that that's out of the way, let's showcase a true 100% status chance build through the use of Nano Applicator. Basically this is another slash build, the highest amount of default damage on the comb 
is slash and if you keep in mind what I told you earlier that IPS has a four times greater chance of proccing over elemental types and of course for the reasons mentioned earlier I will be keeping my viral and it will be mixed together with radiation for the 460 60 mods as for the last mod slot I chose vigilante armaments but of course you can go for more fire rate or you can amplify one of your combos is really up to you now let's change to a Warframe that it will that will allow me to spam a couple of abilities just so I can get the buff from Nano Applicator. And we're also going to be using Arcane Tempo, this one farmable from the first Eidolon down on Cetus on critical hit, which we will do thanks to Arcane Avenger. 10% chance for 60% fire rate to shotguns for 8 seconds and the usual plus 1 Arcane Revive. And of course we're going to be respawning the exact same target simply because I want to outline very clearly that a build such as this wood nano applicator isn't really all that worth. Alright, hit me, Arcane Avenger popped, very good. Now I also got the buff from nano applicator. Got attack speed, look at all the statuses applied to the target. It's essentially a Christmas tree, but I gotta activate another ability now to get nano applicator buff. And again... These guys are bleeding to death, that is the general idea. Once again, a slash is the highest and you will be seeing a lot of slashes on the target. Fire rate through the Arcane Tempo, of course, and we're getting crit chance thanks to Arcane Avenger. There we go. Are you gonna bleed to death? And that is pretty much it. To be honest, it's not really worth it from my point of view, but you can go for a build such as this. Through a Riven, however, it's gonna be a whole lot more potent, so why don't we finally showcase a Riven build for it. Now my Riven for the comb has plus slash, which doesn't really help me as much as you might think, because slash would have been the highest anyway. 136% status chance, which allows me to reach that magic number of 100% status chance without multi-shot effects, and I can even just use three of the 60, 60 mods. So I'm gonna be using Shell Shock together with Toxic Barrage. This time I'm gonna go for Corrosive, then I'm gonna switch to Viral and Scattering Inferno together with Blaze for the heat. One quick mention about the comb's one and only weak point. Stay in a defense or a survival 15 to 20 minutes and you will go bone dry on ammo. There are two ways of fixing this, well kind of free way. One, ammo pads, if you want to burn ammo pads by all means go for that. The second one would be ammo mutation, shotgun ammo mutation, however this one forces you to sacrifice a mod slot and I do not recommend it. Here's a more elegant solution, carrier or carrier prime, any of the two will do. I only have carrier prime so I'm gonna exemplify Ammo case increases ammunition capacity by 25% and converts ammo pickups into ammo for equipped weapons after 2 seconds. Just make sure to have the comb equipped and this should fix all of your ammo issues. Now let's see what kind of a difference does a Riven make and usually it does make quite the difference. Will it be the case this time? Hit me! There we go Arcane Avenger and let's start plugging these guys. Look at that, wow! Absolute bloody carnage. It deals so much damage. It's unreal. I have high crit chance. Well, decent crit chance. Let's be real. But with a 100% status chance, I get slashes. I get armor through. Basically, I get pretty much everything and I'm tearing through these guys like there's no tomorrow. And I still haven't used any Warframe buffs, but one more variation on a status chance build with a Riven like this. Of course, you can go for Viral with Frigid Blast instead of Shell Shock. Now I got Viral. And in this case, it would be a good idea to go for Hunter Munitions because, again, I will be keeping that crit chance from uh, Arcane Avenger. And I'm gonna swap all Blaze because, basically, there's nothing else I would rather give up. And, of course, Prime Point Blank and Prime Ravage took the places of the normal ones as well. We spawn the exact same targets and let's see what kind of bleeds we can get out of these guys like this. There we go, hit him to about 50% and watch him bleed and burn to death at the same time. Absolutely wonderful. A comb ribbon makes a huge difference as long as it's a status chance comb ribbon. Currently going on PC between 200 and 400 plat. My recommendation to you guys would be to get a cheapo comb ribbon, even if it's rolled badly, and then simply go to Kuva, start farming some so you can get a status chance roll. You only need 60% plus to reach the magic 100% number. But if you get a higher number like this, then you can drop some of those 60-60 mods. And it's true for endurance runs, for those guys that like to stay hours and hours in survival or defense missions, a build like this will work a lot better when you're hitting level 300s, 400s. I just like the impact, the absolute power of the corrosive build. 
So we're gonna go back to death once again. We're gonna drop Frigid Blast and we're gonna go to Shell Shock. Was it? Yes, Shell Shock. Drop Hunter Munitions for Blaze because that is one fantastic mod. And this time we're gonna be using Warframe buffs. Now normally for an aura you can use something called Shotgun Amp. Shotgun Amp will give you 18% extra damage to all shotguns. Of course, everybody in the party will be receiving this benefit and it is stackable. I don't recommend it simply because it's only 18% extra damage. Instead of that, you can use something like uh, Corrosive Projection if you know you're going up against Grenier, but Shotgun Amp will grant its benefit regardless of the target. For now, no aura that will pump up my uh, damage. We're gonna be keeping it to Arcanes, Arcane Avenger, of course, like I mentioned earlier, and Arcane Temple. However, one mention, did you know that Arcane Rage actually provides its benefit to mostly any primary weapon? It does say rifles on it, clear, but if you check the wiki, it's a bonus that applies to mostly any primary weapon. And I did check it on the comb, it will provide the benefit to the comb as well. However, the combination I'm recommending once again is Avenger together with Tempo. And this time, we're gonna be using Warframe buffs. Of course, spawn the exact same targets. And I'm gonna be using Mirage's third ability to pump up my damage by 500 plus percent. And here's a couple of clones as well for you guys. And as you will see, now you see them, um, now you don't. My favorite magic trick. What was that? 10 seconds? Not even 10 seconds. The comb can be an end game weapon, but it does require a Riven to get the most out of it. That being said, if you pick up this weapon at MR5, 6, 7, something like that, you can keep it throughout the entirety of the game. It can handle mostly anything, and I absolutely love this weapon. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this build guide. Hopefully now you know everything you need to about the comb and not only. As always, my name has been Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you have any feedback for me or would like to request a specific weapon review, then by all means leave it in the comment section down below. I can't realistically promise you that it will be done by next time, but I will be reading through each and every comment. But until next time guys, bye bye.